why it's green and what's happening in our environment today and uh, what we can do better. Uh, even living in cities, we have to do so many things that we aren't doing. So uh, paying attention to small bits uh, always will uh, help us restore some bit of this nature for our children, for our grandchildren and future generations to come. If not, there's nothing going to be left in just a few years. So this is hard reality. <laughs> so as you see, that's the backwaters of uh, Hemavati, Hemavati Dam. So basically, before the dam was built, uh, there's not much of water in <coughs> all these places. But after the water came in, a lot of the local people started uh, uh, thriving on fishing. Uh, even the land started getting greener because of the water content. But predominantly, there were these forests. So if you see, all these are acacia trees. And you have a lot of other indigenous species as well growing. So we are in a belt where it's in between the eastern guts and the western guts. So we belong to a forest region like dry deciduous evergreen forest. So there are evergreen species, there are deciduous species too. And this forest type is like say 0.2% in the entire universe. So once this goes, it goes. Uh, there, there are many species living in, in, in this habitat. Like, you know, we have the calotus, the green calotus. It's not found anywhere in the world. It's found only here. So like that, there are many species. Uh, once we lose them, we lose them forever. So now, uh, why this gyan? Why, why, why uh, talk about this nature and stuff? Why are you guys here? Can anybody say why you guys are here? To have peace. You, you're coming looking for peace. One is looking for peace. You love nature, yeah. Adventures. He loves adventure. Fitness. Yeah. What else? Fitness. Fitness, yeah. You feel healthy here? Breathing here? Yeah. What about our cities? He's very good at yoga, sir. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. We can look at him there. Yeah. But what about cities? We do all our yoga. We try to be fit in our cities. But what's happening to our mind inside? Cleansing. We yeah, clean. sometimes are at constant war. It's like Russia and Ukraine is happening every day in our lives. You know, the war is only one thing. Understanding what our purpose in life is. Because the only purpose in life for human being is to connect, stay connected, stay grounded with nature. Because without one animal, without one plant... Can anybody survive here? No. At the end of the day, no matter what you want to do, you want to see that little puppy walking up. Even if you're scared of animals, you still want an animal around you. Be it on your plate or be it as a friend. You need it. Yeah. You need plants. Be it on, on your plate or be it as a friend. Yeah. You grow hibiscus. You give flowers to gods or whatever. But the scenario is you need this. You need to see birds like this fly. You, and they help the trees grow. So, at the end of the day, we have seen what destruction we can bring as humans. In our cities today, if we walk into Delhi, there's not one bit of green patch. That's the reality. Now, if we walk into Bangalore, the green patch is reducing. This was a garden city. This was where everything was green and beautiful and I don't feel like living in Bangalore anymore, being a Bangalorean. Because there is so much of overpopulation, overpopulation leading to jungle, uh, uh, the concrete jungle. And instead of uh, restoring jungles, we are building more and more of concrete jungles. Our expansion of roads, see a uh, road built here, there are so many microorganisms living here, none will be surviving. So. What we have to uh, take from this is how uh, sustainable can we start being, you know, we are earning and everything. Some point in time, it will come to you that, okay, let's pick up a small farmland and let's do something for ourselves. And farming is not the thing. But if you think of, you know, restoring one small bit, like in half an acre or quarter acre, if you restore, like, say, even a population of 100 trees, grow some fruit trees for yourself. And let even those birds, the bees come in and, you know, you're having a much healthier environment. Even in the city, this is possible in just 10 square feet. 
If you grow a small garden, put a trumpet vine, put some hibiscus flowers, all basic, you know, you don't have to do too much research about it. All basic trees, speak to your grandmothers, speak to your mothers, they know a lot. Grow some drumsticks. Yeah, these will invite a lot of our little friends like the bees, butterflies, dragonflies. All these are weather indicators, nature indicators, and we all be healthy. Your children, your grandchildren, your grandparents also will see the healthy life cycle. And this is what I would wish for everyone here. Have a very good trip. It's a beautiful place that you're in. And if you get time, go visit uh, Dodda Betta. There's a huge forest uh, uh, line here, Dodda Betta and Rangaswami Betta. So in Dodda Betta and Rangaswami Betta, we have a lot of animals like you have even the apex predator, the tiger. You have the leopards. You have huge elephants. Elephants here are really magnanimous and very magnificent. Uh, if you get to see all these animals, some deers, boars, porcupines, it will be really beautiful living in that habitat. And here in this forest, now you have a lot of uh, peacocks. Uh, you also can spot some birds like shrikes. And there, there's a honey buzzard that's flying there. That's one individual there. You see a lot of ducks. You'll see uh, water hens living around here, white breasted water hens. So go around, have a blast. Uh, and do something for yourself and you know retain these animals and plants sure thank you thank any you questions? do we have any medicinal plants over here medicinal plants yeah uh, actually if you talk about uh, the medicinal aspect of plants every plant is medicinal there is no plant which is non-medicinal even this grass is medicinal. medicinal thank you thank you very much